couple of things before we bring in uh, Kevin Conley. He's got a 30 and 30 on the mothership tomorrow night. You know him as uh, E from Entourage as well. I'll do my best to call him Kevin, not E, during most of the uh, interview here. Thank you. BCS rankings, Bama, Florida State, Oregon, Ohio State, and Missouri. Who would have thought Missouri would be in the top five? Maybe basketball, but uh, look, they're beating those in front of them and uh, had another impressive win over the weekend. Uh, let's see. Chiefs undefeated, Sam Bradford cushing out for the year tonight. Vikings at the Giants. Good luck. Uh, let's bring in Kevin Conley. And uh, I, you know what? I was even doing it when you stopped in, Kevin. I, I said, hey, and Seton goes, uh, you keep calling him E. I, how often does that happen, that people call you E instead of Kevin? Not as much as he, actually, strangely, you do it more, more I don't know so why. than anybody. I know. I I'm not even <laughs> saying that. I'm actually serious. You do it more than anybody. Really? <clears throat> yeah. I, even when I text you, I think I say E. I don't even say Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty I much. apologize for it's that. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, but you're one of the people that I, I can accept it from. But, but okay. you, you're known, like. Yeah. But yeah. is that sometimes hard? You're trying to shed being known as E from Entourage? Of course. I mean, you know, it's funny, Jerry Turtle. As yeah. you would call him, yeah. even though you I know still call him Turtle well. too. <laughs> Paulie yeah. goes, he doesn't like to be called Turtle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, you know, we talk about it. It's like people say, "Oh, how badly do you want to put it behind you?" And it's, I mean, yes and no. You know, it's something. It's a source of pride, obviously, the show. So, yeah, you want to. I would prefer you call me Kevin, but oh. <laughs> you know, it's like. But you got a movie then? You're the Entourage, the movie. Yeah. When is that coming out? Well, we're trying to work. We're trying to work that out. We're hopefully going to shoot that in January. That's the plan. Okay, I keep hearing that. Right. Like, you keep pushing it off and on. Wait, like, what's the problem here? Wahlberg? No, no, not at all. Um, it's a scheduling thing. Jerry Farrar? No, everybody. It's uh, it's just trying to line up line up all the pieces. Oh, Piven it's, is the problem. No, Piven, yeah. Piven is not. <laughs> oh, Piven's not, not the problem. He's, he is not the problem. Nobody, could, there are no problems. Could you take Piven if you had to? What, in a... No, fine. <laughs> well, I actually think he does, like, some kind of weird martial arts. Oh, he does? So, yes, Yes, you yes, can take I can. it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> when you work with a group like that, it's like you're in a band. Pretty much. Like, did like it a ever, boy band. Yeah. Did, did, <laughs> did it ever come to a point where, like, you get just tired of each other or angry at each other? Yeah, but I, honestly, I'm not, I'm not just saying this, but it's in a, like a, the way you would get mad at your brother. You know, yeah, of course, you spend that much time. Yeah, but with, I fought my brother. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, none, none of us ever came to blows, but, I mean, there, there's a, you know, there's a bond. We have a bond that we'll always have. But, uh, no, I never, I personally never wanted to, you know, wrestle with Jerry or anything. It, it never came to that for me. Johnny Drama? He's, Kevin Dillon's the greatest guy in the world. Have you met him? Yeah. He's the best. Kevin he's is, a knucklehead. He's the most fun guy in the world. A, a good with. dude. He's a great dude. All right, you got this 30 and 30, and I remember you were telling me about this over a year ago, maybe even longer, where you were going to do a 30 and 30 on the owner of the New York Islanders. The former. Former owner. F fraudulent owner okay. of the New York Islanders. And this is your hockey team, the Islanders. It's your the beloved. Islanders. Okay, how personal did this get for you that you almost wanted to out this guy and say, look at who he was? Well, you know, it wasn't really that personal at all. I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm a filmmaker. I take it pretty seriously. So for me, I just wanted to make the best movie that I could. I needed to get him to sit down for an interview, which was the, which was the tricky thing. And it's also not what I do. So I wasn't that good at it, really. I, you know, have a new respect for, for you guys. And to ask the hard questions weren't, weren't, wasn't as easy as I thought. I, I thought once I had him, I was just going to grill him. But it's not so, it's not as easy as it looks. Well, you want to be somebody's, you want to be respectful. Mm -hmm. The right. problem sometimes is you want to be somebody's friend, then you can't ask them tough questions. Tough questions. Yeah. Right. What was it that you wanted to have your audience know about this owner? Well, I was trying to get an understanding of a few things. You know, what his sort of end play was, like you know, whether or not he thought he could pull, was going to pull this off, or if he, you know, I just didn't understand really where he was going with it. What um, exactly is he accused of doing? Found guilty of doing? He defrauded. Fleep, well, what the story was is that the team was for sale for $165 million. He ran in the right circles, and people assumed that he had all this money, so he went into Fleet Bank of Boston and took out an $80 million loan with a document that he made at his house, like he, with the scissors and cut up a piece of paper, made a phony document, and Fleet Bank gave him $80 million. He bought the team and was literally, I mean, he fired the coach. He was trading guys. He's flying around on the team plane. And finally, somebody was like, wait a second, who, who, who are you? Like, what, who, what are you doing? Who are you? And, and, uh, and Did then he have he, a criminal history? Uh, 
not at that, not at that point, but he, he he became one quick, you know, and started to unravel for him. He went to jail, and then he got out of jail, and he was back within four months up to. Did you talk to the loan officer at Fleet? You know, the, the, they were pretty tough to say. It was easier to get Spano to. For the it was easier to get the owner than it was. They, somebody. they wouldn't. They wouldn't talk to us. They wouldn't, and and rightfully so. I mean, it's it's an, it, people ask because people are quick to point the finger at the NHL. You know, Gary Bettman and the, the vetting process. Truth is, Fleet Bank begged this guy to take eighty million dollars because he started to get cold feet. The bank was essentially saying, "Get in here and get this money." <laughs> we're gonna. Take. So it's it's kind of strange, but. It's uh, ESPN's 30 and 30 documentary. It's called Big Shot and uh, directed by Kevin Conley. And it airs tomorrow night at 8 Eastern on the Mothership. Um, you were in Rocky Five. I was in Rocky Five. yeah. You were one of the tough kids in Rocky Five. I was a bully. I was a schoolyard, a schoolyard bully. I beat up uh, Rocky Jr. How, t- okay, when you're in, how old were you at the time? 14. Okay. So you see Stallone. Yeah. A- had you been around somebody that... That big, that famous at fourteen? I had not. No. Okay. How do you how do you react when? I was I was pretty starstruck. I was, and he was he was a larger than life character. That's for sure. And how is he to you when he sees you acting? Does he critique? He no no he didn't he was he was good he he wasn't directing that one so uh, and a lot of my scenes were with with his son who it was actually his real son Sage Stallone yeah. who pa- passed away recently recently yeah. Is, Terrible, because he was really a good kid. Tommy Morrison Tommy was in Morrison that. Tommy Morrison also yeah, just recently passed. passed away. So, um, yeah, no, and Tommy Morrison was another one. I mean, at the time, Tommy Morrison was 24 years old. He was undefeated. He was, like, you know, the guy. He was in line for a title. You know, he was going to fight for the title. It was, it was, he was pretty impressive as well. I know that you're, you know, here you are producing movies now, but acting, it, to take a review, a critique, easier as an actor or as a, a producer or director? Hmm. They definitely both hurt. I mean, as an actor, you take it personally because it's usually about specifically about you. And as a director, you take it a little more hard because you've put a lot more work into it. I mean, the difference between directing and acting, the workload is is time ty- is ten times. But we don't see your face as the director or producer. But you, when you but when you the, with the amount of time you spent, it hurts to read a bad review about something you directed. Did you get ripped at all on Entourage? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, it, not everybody. It's funny, even people that liked the show would take the show so personally <laughs> that they'd get mad about an episode and end up ripping you. You know, season eight or whatever, it's... Like what? what, what why are they ripping E? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I would say. Like, and also, too, like, most shows come out and they review season one, and then that's it. You know, meanwhile, where season seven, it's like a whole new set of reviews, and it's we're like a little movie every year. What so. did they say? What, what hurt? <clears throat> Let's see. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, well, they, yeah, they say terrible things. Well, like what? Um, well, well, a funny story is, uh, you know, obviously I'm from Long Island and I was home for something and I'm flipping through the, the, <laughs> the New York Post and I go to the, get to the end of the section and there's a piece of the newspaper that's missing. It's clearly been cut out. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is odd. Okay, I don't really think much of it, you know, and I flip, keep, continue reading. And uh, then when I, when I, Later on, I picked up the paper, and it was me getting crushed by, by the woman at the post. And my mother had knew I was coming home and <laughs> cut the article out and hid it from me because she knew that I would, the first thing I'd do was read the post. And so, um, What are they yeah, ripping you about? Just, you know, being, you know, being terrible. They tell you how terrible you are or whatever. Yeah, they're, 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 not, they're not very they're – and, and it's always the same people. You know, there's the people that like you, and then there's like one or two people that inevitably come after you. So. What about the casting for extras? How did, how did that work with you guys when you saw the women that, like, there'd be in a pool scene? Yeah. Okay, how does that work? And that's got to be time-consuming. Got to be tough girls with their bathing suits on. You stay well, late, you know. Well, you know, also, too, it was kind of a, I, w- I always tried to err on the side of safety because it just felt like trouble waiting to happen. So I always sort of just kind of kept my distance because it just felt like a bad situation. You know, I don't know. All it takes is one person to make an accusation so i always kept a distance but it would it would be funny in the morning you'd pull up to you know you'd be eating breakfast at the breakfast truck and then like a bus would pull up and a <laughs> hundred different girls every different like they how did they find a new hundred girls where are these where do these girls come from but they you all be in bikinis. In- no i just thought it was a better pol. i just made a, a policy early on to just not do that i mean if they saw somebody out afterwards it's a different story but actually on set just felt like a bad idea 
How's Emmanuel Shrieky? She's great. I miss her. You love her. I do love her. Yeah. <sighs> Let's just take a moment. <laughs> was it a one take? Was it a one take on the three way scene? <clears throat> there were very few takes <laughs> on the three way scene. It was really. Oh, I know. It's uncomfortable no, and awkward I, I and challenging. I, I, I swear. Just I mean, stop. I think we did a shot of tequila, all of us each, and, and did like one or two takes. But it was. It was it's, it's awkward. It really is. I know, of course, that sounds. Well, I, had a, I have a kissing scene in a Sandler movie. It's coming out next year. And it is awkward. It's but, awkward. but my daughter was on the set at the time. That's really And awkward. I didn't tell her mom. <laughs> so that was another part that was awkward. Yeah, I usually, when I have to do that kind of stuff, I just... It's better not to mention it. You know, like, you know, I would never tell my girlfriend, oh, you know, go on a set today. Do, but do. you have a show now on CBS. If yeah. there was a kissing scene. There is. I have a. Brooklyn you know, Decker? No, no, you no. You don't no. get to make it. I don't with get her. to make it. Okay, okay. But if there's a kissing scene, do you tell your girlfriend? No, because there's no reason to. Because it's, especially on a sitcom. Well, what happens when I she mean, watches? If you were doing Unfaithful, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe it's something. You'd have to mention. What but, about nine and a half weeks? Or <laughs> well, something that's what I'm like saying. That, if yeah. you're doing a movie like that, it's, it's conversations have to be had. But a but a sitcom kiss is pretty. It's pretty basic. So uh, that, that's nothing to get uh, up in arms about. Uh, you want to hang for a little bit here? Sure. All right. So uh, Kenny Rosenthal is reporting uh, Jim Leland stepping down as the Tigers manager. We'll see if we can get a hold of him. Pat McAfee, the Colts punter, a little bit later on after the win last night and the big hit that he had. Let's see. Um, you can watch the show. You can see Kevin. Please don't call me E. Uh, <laughs> sitting here, and uh, you can watch it on Audience Channel Two Thirty Nine Direct TV. What did, what did you have to say, Seaton? You had your hand raised to say something to Kevin. Well, that, Kevin, you're talking about uh, how some people just take the show way too seriously and get mad about episodes. Right. When you're sitting next to like the number one <laughs> dude for that show. I did. I got upset. Okay, I'll tell you why I got upset. Man, <laughs> I had uh, who the. Uh, Greg Allen, uh, Doug Allen, Doug uh, he called from France. He was over there on some boat. He was saying, I hear you're trashing my show. I yeah. said, oh, wow. Yeah, I'll he's tell you what. He's very sensitive. Want. Yeah, he was. Sensitive. Very, very sensitive. Because he likes you, so if, uh, that's where he... I was giving an honest appraisal of the show, and I had some issues there. I have issues, but I had issues with the show <laughs> as well. Kevin Conley, uh, you know him as E. I knew him as E. Not anymore. He's Kevin Conley. Uh, the 30 and 30 documentary Big Shot is airing uh, tomorrow night. It's about the, uh, the scam perpetrated by a Dallas businessman who bought his New York Islanders. All right, now, I, I did object late in Entourage when you started to have these cameos for the sake of having cameos with stars. And, and I, I said that on the air. And Doug Allen, who created the series, was on a boat in France, and he called and said, I hear you're ripping us. And I said, who is this? And he said, I'm Doug Allen. I said, yeah, why are you putting, you know, Jessica Simpson in there or, you know, these drive-by celebrities? And he goes, okay, all right, that's fair. So I, I did. I, I ripped that. Uh, I, agree. I agree. I think it's fair. I think it's a fair. I mean, obviously, it's in hindsight, you know, at the time, you know, we went from a place where we couldn't get anybody to do the show. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, everybody wants to do it. And you just start kind of doing it. And then in hindsight, you go, okay, I get that we didn't really need it. But, yeah, I, it, it's fair. Well, I just thought that they, they didn't add anything to it. It was more right. of you guys playing golf with Tom Brady. Right. It seemed like it was more for you guys than it was for the audience. Well, some of them made uh, – the Tom Brady one didn't bother me as much as the Jessica Simpson one. I mean – that could happen because the, the thing about living in LA is you do find yourself in sort of weird pairings at times. Like you're in a group where you're okay. This Give me an example. Strange. Give me an example. I don't know. I remember one. <laughs> this is really weird. I was like at some party and I was like standing there talking to in a conversation with Vern Troyer and Suge Knight, which I thought was odd. <laughs> True story. And I, I said it. I called it out. I said, guys, this is strange, right? Am I the only one that thinks this is Who made you strange? more nervous? Well, it was just, it was just awkward. But I, I thought, tried to break the tension by saying, like, guys, this is kind of strange. So it doesn't, everybody's like, well, what's strange about it? I, I don't know. You know, forget it. No, it's not strange. It's totally normal. This is, I don't want to, certainly don't want to make Suge mad. But yeah, it, it seemed odd to me to be having a well, very serious conversation, too, I might add, about whatever it was. But do you go out to restaurants? where you know famous people go out to? Or would you avoid those? Well, I, I avoid those sort of paparazzi places if I can because they give me anxiety, mainly because they ask you a bunch of hard, they ask you hard questions. Not that you think you're too cool, but 
they'll ultimately end up, you know, asking you about the, you know, something, I don't know, those guys, they ask hard questions, those TMZ guys. They're scary. And they hang out at a few places. So I'll try to avoid, you know, but but at the end of the day, you, you, I live in a certain area, and you go eat where you, you know, where you eat. I mean, I don't know what to say. Do else. you have famous friends? Huh? <laughs> yes, we do. I, of course. Like like who? <laughs> we did. We've been over. He asked me this every time. Like, I forgot. So, uh, <laughs> Who are your famous friends? I know where friends? this is going, Dan. Who are I your famous friends? Going. We've been over this. We've been over this. I know you want to hear this Come on, great Kevin. story. Suge Knight and Vern Troy just aren't cutting it for you. No, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> famous, famous friends. Who would it be? Most famous friend is you. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, what do you want, what do you want me to say, Dan? What do you, yeah, so I, I, I'm, Leo, I'm friends with Leo. Leo was a buddy of mine. Leo, Leo, oh, Leo, Leo DiCaprio Leo, oh, Leo was a very... Leo DiCaprio, okay. Yes, Leonardo okay. DiCaprio. I did not know that. Friend. Yes, you did know that because you asked me every time. <laughs> Who's had a better and off... you want to know about off, parties? And, okay, here. Who's had a better <laughs> off-field career? Leo or Jeter? It's a good, a couple good off-field careers. Um, I don't know. It's tough to, it's tough to say. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's a great question. You don't. I, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't say. I mean, I guess it's a matter of taste. They both covered some good ground. <laughs> 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 Whose career would you rather have? Wow, well, that's tough. I, listen, I was listening to you. I mean, I longevity is good. Yeah. I don't know. Would you rather be Jeter on and off the field or Leo? This is a great question. I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I just would, like you said, the longevity thing, even though Jeter's been around for 20 years. I mean, listen, who's better than Derek Jeter? Nobody, right? Leo hasn't won an Academy Award, has he? No, he hasn't. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought, mean, surely at some point you would have thought he, he could have. What he did and what's he eating Gilbert Grape was brilliant. And do you know that he was beat out by Tommy Lee Jones for The Fugitive for the Oscar? Oh, that's not good. Which was a great performance. Tommy, Tommy but... Lee's great, but what Leo did, when I saw Leo, yeah. I, I thought that that's how he really was. Right. I, did not, I didn't know anything about Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio. Right. Who were, you, who were some of your other friends? <laughs> like, if we went out, like, you know, I'm in your neighborhood and we go out. Right. Who are we, who are we calling to make sure I have a good night? <laughs> Oh boy, I don't, you know this is this is just got this gets tougher and tougher. Suge Knight, no Suge Knight, no 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 Suge Knight. I'm not gonna cut up for you. Um, no, listen, I've been running with the same crowd for a long time, but people, you know, Toby McGuire. Toby's a very one of my best friends. Okay, he's great, but you know, Toby's married and he has kids. Yeah. and he's not really around as much. So he won't and go. People with travel. Us. He's not coming. All right, so Leo goes. Leo might you know, come I up. wouldn't have Leo go because then he'll <laughs> steal. I mean, he won't be a great wingman. <laughs> Probably not for you. <laughs> Probably not for you. Okay, who else is going out with us? <laughs> I have no idea. Don't you? Aren't you proud of your friends? I am proud of my I'll friends. I'll tell you my famous friends. Who are your famous friends? Seton, Paulie, Fritzy, and McLovin. <laughs> yeah. And Brooklyn Decker. And your Brooklyn friends, Decker. Your friends Brooklyn and Brooklyn Decker. Decker. What's the name of the CBS? It's sitcom? called Friends with Better Lives. And Brooklyn says hello to all of you. We guys. love Brooklyn. She's a okay. Fan of the show. So when's it start? Uh, it's probably March is when they're, when they're saying. Hmm. So. Will any of the guys from Entourage? make cameos on this show. I would highly doubt it. I would doubt it. I would think that would be too weird for people. They would feel like they were breaking the fourth wall, so to speak. And Turtle has fallen in love with his body. He does. Jerry Ferrara has all of a sudden realized he's not Turtle anymore. He's jacked. Is he one of your friends? He wouldn't go out. Of course. Out yeah, no, by the way, absolutely. But you know what? Jerry's you a great guy You cannot with. count on him. That dude will, I'm still waiting for a call six months ago. Right. When I said, Jerry, hey, I'll, I'll meet you at dinner. Didn't hear from him. I haven't heard from him in six months. Yeah. No, he's, that, that would be the one thing. But Jerry's a, great, Jerry's a great guy. Like, Jerry would be a guy that I would call to go out. Like, I'm going out tonight. Yeah, but I would go. need big names, though. Right. Like, I, I need somebody. You'd rather Leo than Jerry? Yeah, Jerry. I'd rather have Leo. Yeah. yeah. Now, are you allowed to ask Leo about movies? <laughs> like, I would feel like that I couldn't ask him anything. Couldn't ask him about women. And I could ask him about, what's your next what? project? Yeah, he, he, just, he just doesn't do interviews like that. Is he a sports guy? He's a basketball guy. Laker guy? Yeah. Don't you have to be a Laker guy if you live in L.A.? You, you kind of have to be a Laker Why aren't guy. you a Knicks guy? I just, I just was never, first of all, I was never really a fan, big basketball fan until I moved to L.A. And it's just, you know, it's like the only thing that that city has do in common. Do you just go to be seen at the no, Laker I don't, I don't. I don't go, I, I get anxiety in those seats. I'd rather be... Like in the, the have floor you taken seats. a date there? No, no. So no. It's a guy's trip. Yes. Okay. ESPN's thirty and thirty documentary. It's thirty for thirty. Thirty for thirty. <laughs>
30 on 30. ESPN's 30 <laughs> for 30, starring E, uh, directed by uh, Kevin Conley. It airs tomorrow night at 8 Eastern. And you're lucky. You know, I, I, I could ask you really tough questions here. You're I mean, squirming here. I am. Uh, well, that, by the way, these have been tough questions. Are you gonna, you're, I was not prepared. What do you think Fallon's going to ask you? on Fallon tonight? Yeah, we're going to do Jimmy Okay, Fallon. what do you think Fallon's going to ask you? Not about Leo and Derek Cheater and who they date. That's for sure. Hopefully, hopefully not. I wish you well with this. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll do my, I promise I'll do my best to stop calling you. Yeah. It's 3430 <laughs> tomorrow night at 8 Eastern on the Mothership. He's Kevin Conley. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.